I don't like telling this story. And most people, they don't believe it when I do. It brings back too many painful memories. Memories that I've been running away from since I was a ten-year-old boy. I'd been called a devil, a murderer, a child just desperate for attention. I'm 40 years old now, and I'm sure people still question my sanity. I even question my sanity. It's been 30 years, but I will never forget what happened in that house. I will never forget what I heard, what I saw. I saw things and heard things that no living person should see. Things that would leave a scar that can never heal. And things that would leave you questioning your sanity. I will warn you. This story, this true story, is not for the faint of heart. It was in Ohio, 1985, when we moved into the house. My mother was looking for a fresh start after my father's abusive acts became too much for her to bear. He never touched me or my sister Hannah in any harmful way, but he and my mother, they would go at it almost every night. My mother would be left with a black eye and a swollen lip I pretended like I didn't know what was going on, and I regret that now. When we first arrived at the house, I could tell that it was really old. The windows were dusty, the paint was weathered and peeling off, and the grass stood almost as tall as I did. It looked abandoned, as if we were the first people to live there in decades. There was also an old swing set in the back, and behind that was a pond that held dirty water with a greenish colour. The fence would creak as you opened it, as did the stairs. The first two months, things were quiet. Nothing was really out of the ordinary, but I noticed something that seemed strange to me. I was in the house looking through the window to make sure that Hannah was okay being alone in the backyard. She was on the swing set, but, oddly, the swing next to her was moving back and forth, as if someone was there with her. But there was no one there, nobody but Hannah. I figured it was probably just the wind. I went out there because I didn't want her out there alone. I was very protective of my sister. When I sent her inside, I stayed out there for about a minute. And then, I began to think that maybe I wasn't imagining things. Because when I looked up, I saw someone in the hallway window. They looked down, right at me. I couldn't really see their face. Maybe it was Hannah. Maybe it wasn't. It wasn't really until the next night when things got frightening. Hannah's screaming echoed through the house in the middle of the night. My mother and I woke up and quickly ran to her. It sounded as if someone were attacking her, but we didn't see anyone. She was screaming at the top of her lungs pointing up at the ceiling. She's trying to drown me, she screamed, more than once. We didn't see anything, but she saw something that night. Something was there. After that night, things started getting weird. I've heard footsteps echoing through the house. And, I know this is going to sound weird, but I've heard someone singing. It sounded like a young girl. 
and I know it wasn't Hannah, because it sounded nothing like her. I was laying in my bed when I heard it. It must have been around midnight, because everyone else was asleep. She sang it. Whoever it was, she sang it over and over again. sounded as if they were coming toward me. They were getting closer and closer until eventually they were right at my door. I heard water dripping. It sounds strange, but I know what I heard. The singing had stopped and all I could hear was the water dripping. Then, Everything became silent. The doorknob started turning, just slightly. I hid under my covers, and eventually, whoever it was, or whatever it was, had left. This wasn't the only time I had a weird experience like that late at night. I've also heard whispers. Most of the time... I heard them coming from the basement. I never understood what the whisperer was saying. But one night, I heard them loud and clear. I was asleep. I heard footsteps in my room, just like the other night. It just felt like someone was watching me. Like someone was sitting right at the edge of my bed. I lay there, with my eyes closed, hoping, praying it would go away. But then, it whispered, right in my ear. Who are you? I didn't reply. I didn't want to make a habit out of talking to things I couldn't see. It sounded like a woman. I guess it left afterwards, because I didn't hear anything else. I was horrified by what was going on in the house. I tried to explain it to my mother, but she never believed me. She claimed I was dreaming, and I almost believed that maybe I was dreaming. My mother, she seemed distant. She wasn't the same person anymore. I was worried about Hannah as well. She must have been traumatised by what she saw that night. I loved my sister. We did a lot together. But she became distant as well. One day, I walked past her room and I heard her singing. I walked into her room, and she stopped singing. She was sitting on the floor, drawing, as usual. Where did you learn that song from, Hannah? I asked her. I learned it from my friend, she replied, pointing towards the corner of the room. I looked around the room, but I didn't see anyone or anything. I noticed her drawing, and it was really strange. She drew herself, sitting on the swing, and next to her was another girl. Who is that girl you drew? I asked her. That's my friend. Her name is Maddie. 
I figured she must have had an imaginary friend. She was six years old, so that was normal. But that didn't explain the song. Is she the one who taught you the song, Hannah? She nodded her head, yes. Her mother used to sing it to her every night, she told me. And she still does it sometimes. Well, where is she now? I asked her. She dropped her crayon and stood up off the floor. She's behind you. It was then that I felt a cool breeze rush through my body. I turned around slowly, just to see myself through the mirror that hung against the wall. And that's when I saw her. She was only there for less than two seconds, standing to the right of me, entrenched in water. She looked young, around six, the same age as Hannah. I wasn't as scared as I should have been. I asked Hannah if she was the girl who was on the ceiling that night. She said no, and that the one on the ceiling was Maddie's mother. She said that her mother was evil, and that she would kill us if we told anybody about her, the same way she killed Maddie. I wasn't scared until then. I wanted to tell my mother, but I'm sure she wouldn't have believed me anyway. I just wanted to protect my sister, so I said no word about it to anyone. I didn't really think that a ghost could do any physical harm anyway, but I was 10 at the time. I didn't know much about ghosts. The only thing I did know about them was that they were people who were once living. Later that day, I was walking past the basement when I heard the laughter of a young girl. It sounded like Hannah, so I walked down the stairs. She was sitting, alone, in the middle of the basement. You shouldn't be down here by yourself, Hannah, I said to her. I'm not by myself, she said. She had one of those jewellery boxes with the ballerina, you know, the one that would twirl and play music when you open it. What are you doing down here? I asked her. Maddie wanted to show me her jewellery box. I looked around. I didn't see anybody. Not that I wanted to. I felt very uneasy, like somebody was watching me. I knew somebody was there. We have to go, now, I yelled. We need to get upstairs. I just didn't want to be down in that basement. Shh, she whispered. You're gonna wake her mother. Get up, Hannah, I yelled. I heard a noise. It came from the other room of the basement. Hannah started crying. I could see the fear in her eyes. She stood up on her feet, dropping the jewellery box. Danny, she cried, pointing behind me. She's behind you. My heart popped out of my chest. I remember shaking and my heart beating at a rapid pace as I slowly turned around. I froze in fear for a few seconds. She was there. She had long, black hair and was wearing a black gown. Her face was pale and her eyes were pitch black. It was like looking in the eyes of death itself. I grabbed Hannah and we ran upstairs to our mother. I wasn't sure if she believed us. She told us to stay out of the basement and that was it. That face I saw still haunts me to this day. Hours 
hours after that frightening experience. I lay awake in my bed, as I could not sleep. It was past midnight, so everyone else was asleep. I heard music coming from outside my room. I got out of bed, thinking that maybe it was Hannah. I peeked out of my door, but I didn't see anyone. I walked down the hallway, and on the floor, in front of Hannah's room, it was the jewellery box from the basement. I watched as the ballerina twirled around and around and around. Everything was like in slow motion. I became light-headed. The air was cold and heavy. Somebody was watching me. I heard somebody singing. Singing that same song. It wasn't a young girl this time. It was a woman. The birds are singing, singing, singing. Go to bed, go to bed. I'll see you in the morning, morning, morning. Now rest your head, rest your head. The singing was coming from inside Hannah's room. I opened her door. The singing stopped, and I didn't see anyone. Hannah was fast asleep. I asked her about it the next day, but she had absolutely no idea what I was talking about. Weeks after that incident was when everything took a turn for the worse. Just like before, she was screaming, screaming at the top of her lungs in the middle of the night. We ran to her, my mother and I. She's trying to drown me, she screamed. She's trying to drown me. Who? My mother asked. Who are you talking about? Hannah stopped screaming and stood from her bed. She was shaking. Her face was pale and her voice became weak. Her eyes were wide as she stood there, almost like she was frozen, like she couldn't move. She's behind the door, she whispered suddenly, pointing at the door with a horrified look in her eyes. The door slammed shut and I found myself alone outside in the hallway. They were screaming. My mother and my sister were screaming and there was nothing I could do. I tried to open the door, but it was stuck. Let me in, let me in, I yelled. I kicked and I punched because that was all that I could do. They were screaming as loud as they could until suddenly the screaming stopped. Mum, Hannah, I screamed out. No answer. They were dead. My mother and my sister were dead. That was all I could think. The birds are singing, singing, singing. Go to bed, go to bed. I'll see you in the morning, morning, morning. Now rest your head, rest your head. It sounded like my mother. I heard the door unlock from the other side, and I opened it, slowly. I found my mother, sitting at the side of the bed, singing to Hannah, who was fast asleep. She then stood up. I saw an emptiness in her eyes as she walked right past me, as if I wasn't even there. I was beyond confused. It just didn't make any sense. I woke up the next morning to a loud noise coming from the kitchen. I 
ran downstairs to see my mother making breakfast, soaking wet and singing that damn song. Why are you wet, mother? I asked. She said nothing. Where's Hannah? Who are you? She whispered. It's me, mother. I'm your son. She looked at me, staring into my eyes as if she were stealing my soul. She smiled. A crooked, evil smile I'd never seen before. I don't have a son, she said. Now run along. Maddie isn't available. She walked down the basement and closed the door. After what can't have been more than a minute, I heard a loud noise that echoed from the basement. I ran upstairs to Hannah's room, searching everywhere for her. She wasn't in there. I walked out into the hall, and that's when I saw her walk down the stairs. I breathed a sigh of relief. I thought she was dead. I chased after her. She led me outside, but I lost her as I shuffled through the tall grass. I ran to the backyard, thinking she might be playing on the swing set. I didn't see her, but the swings were both swinging rapidly. I heard laughter. It sounded like two young girls. One of them actually sounded like Hannah, but I couldn't see anyone. I walked behind the swing set, and that's when I saw her. She was floating, lifeless, face down in the pond. I heard her voice as it echoed with the wind. The birds are singing, 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 go to bed, go to bed.